hi everybody i hope you are doing well so in this lecture we'll be discussing the energy generation and antioxidant capacity of the rbc's hope you will enjoy it and it will be beneficial for you as you might be already aware of the uh, rbc's uh, you know that they are the primarily red blood cells present in the blood uh, which are uh, dedicated to the oxygen uptake from the lungs and delivery to the tissues. Their uh, structure is unique in that they don't contain any, uh, any nucleus in them. So the enzyme generation capacity as well as the metabolism within these RBCs are very much limited. So what happens uh, when the glucose is uptaken by these cells within themselves? Uh, it is primarily oxidized by anaerobic metabolism uh, and converted into lactate for the uh, consumption uh, and the generation of the ATPs within these uh, RBCs so that they will do their function. In RBCs, there are three uh, different metabolic pathways which take place um, in them for the uh, oxidation of the glucose or you can say utilization of the glucose, which in turn also affects their half-life. Uh, these three pathways are the embedded and Meyerhoff pathway, also called as glycolysis, which provides necessary ATPs for its existence, for the existence of the RBC to do their day-to-day -day function. Uh, like here and you will see it belongs to uh, usually has uh, 11 different steps converting glucose via different intermediate uh, metabolites uh, to final lactate within the RBCs and in uh, favor of the steps uh, the ATPs are generated which enable RBCs to do their function. Second important pathway which take place in the RBCs is the HMP shunt. It's also called as hexose monophosphate shunt and its primarily uh, function in the RBC is to provide NADPH which is a reducing equivalent uh, to keep uh, glutathione in the reduced form. What it does I will tell you later on down the video and then it uh, is used, utilized uh, to keep uh, the RBC membrane viable so that it will prevent hemolysis and then third pathway is the lubring rapoport shunt um, which usually produces 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate. 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate affects the oxygen binding capacity of the RBCs later on. It is necessarily uh, utilized by the RBCs to decrease their affinity of Hb for O2 and enables them to give oxygen quickly uh, in the tissues. So quickly going to the antioxidant capacity of the RBCs. Antioxidant capacity within the RBCs is actually wholly and solely dependent on a system called as glutathione reductase system. This system is in containing interdependent three proteins, uh, two of which are enzymes. These three proteins are glutathione peroxidase enzyme called as GPX and glutathione, which gives the uh, reducing uh, equivalents like uh, hydrogen in it to reduce the reactive oxygen species. And then the third enzyme is the glutathione reductase, which reduces the glutathione oxidized form back to glutathione reduced form. And for the reduction, the NADPH is utilized. So this is the whole system which uh, is functional in the RBCs to keep uh, the reactive oxygen species at bay and quench them. Usually hydrogen peroxide is produced uh, in higher quantity in RBCs because of the uh, uh, oxidation of the glucose. And this uh, hydrogen peroxide or any other um, reactive oxygen species is quenched by glutathione peroxidase, which is a selenium dependent enzyme and converting this hydrogen peroxide into water. And in turn, the reduced uh, glutathione is getting oxidized which in turn will be converted back to reduced glutathione by glutathione reductase utilizing the NADPH. So the question now arises, how does RBCs enable this system to uh, be viable? This system should be running for the RBCs to have a maximum half-life of 120 days. Uh, 
this is provided uh, by the HMP shunt, as I already told you. The HMP shunt uh, has a specific enzyme which converts the glucose 6 phosphate to 6 phosphogluconate. This reaction is catalyzed by the glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. This enzyme also produces NADPH. These NADPH feed to the NADPH feeds to the glutathione peroxidase system and keeps the glutathione always in a reduced form so that it will be utilized by the glutathione peroxidase for the scavenging of the reactive oxygen species. If however something goes wrong in this enzyme, what happens is that the availability of NADPH will be very much reduced which in turn will affect the availability of the reduced glutathione and when glutathione reduced form is not available the uh, uh, scavenging or scrunching of the reactive oxygen species will not happen and it will lead to the damage to the lipid membranes and causes hemolysis so in order to prevent the hemolysis before the half-life of the rbcs you have to make hmp shunt running that means that glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme should be viable uh, so a defect of g6pd or as well uh, of the gpx can result in the mild to moderate severe um, hemolytic anemia uh, and which is also exacerbated by some uh, drugs and chemicals as well what happens is that it is classically uh, a defect uh, which is manifested also in the production of the Heinz bodies. The Heinz bodies are actually the denatured uh, hemoglobin located within the RBCs as you can see in the uh, plate here. You will see there is a detection of some inclusion bodies within the RBCs as well. These Heinz bodies are actually produced by the denaturation of the beta globin chain through myelite reactions and they are exacerbated by the defect in the G6PD where uh, as I already told you uh, there will be a limited capacity of GPX system uh, to quench the reactive oxygen species and internal reactive oxygen species will cause the uh, denaturation of the proteins within the RBCs and hence lead to an uh, hemolytic anemia by decreasing their half life. So this is pretty much it uh, to answer your questions. Mm, uh, if you like the content then you can subscribe to my channel and give me the opinions what else uh, should I cover and how should I cover. Thank you so much for uh, seeing this video. Take care.